ऑनलाइन इधर 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 
ठीक सर कर गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल या यू आर ऑडिबल ओके 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 थैंक यू सर विद परमिशन ऑफ डायरेक्टर इंचार्ज डॉक्टर ए के सिंह वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस प्रोग्राम सो रिस्पेक्टेड डायरेक्टर सर डॉक्टर ए के सिंह इंचार्ज सर माय सीनियर माय क्लीग्स फ्रॉम आईआईएमआर रीजनल स्टेशन एंड डिफरेंट एआईसीआरपी सेंटर्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल एज ए वी नो is celebrating the 75 years of independence that is azadi ka amrit mahotsav uh, as per instruction of icr our institute iimr including different aicrp centers uh, organizing different activities up to 15th august 2023 so there are different themes under the umbrella of azadi ka amrit mahotsav these are the health and wellness atmanirbhar bharat cultural pride life uh, means lifestyle for environment inclusive development water tribal empowerment and unity uh, so under these themes a number of activities will be conducted uh, by icr iimr and its regional centers and uh, aicrp centers uh, apart from that there will be uh, special lectures by experts from various fields like health agriculture education Uh, sports science and environment uh, so in this series today is a lecture on safety and health at work uh, today's lecture because <laughs> today is the world day on the safety and health at work place and uh, under the this lecture is under the theme of health and wellness uh, 
today's speaker is uh, Dr. Ala Singh, who is scientist in biotechnology at ICR IMR Ludhiana, and uh, he has joined uh, as a scientist in April 2016. Uh, in his brief introduction, I would like to say he uh, done his MSc from University of Mysore, Karnataka and PhD in Life Science from National Institute of Immunology uh, and from New Delhi. And uh, he has developed technology for rapid differentiation of normal maze from QPM to link the QPM with the market value. And uh, he has received two times best scientist award in the Institute for uh, his uh, great contribution in research and institution building. Apart from these, he has experience of working in biosafety level 3 laboratory and his research focus mainly is on biomass transformation technologies. He published many research papers, review articles, popular articles, books, chapters, etc. And among these, one article published in May General where he uh, provided insight on possible routes of survival of mycobacterium tuberculosis in maize silage. And uh, this is his brief introduction. And uh, before uh, I am, I handed over, hand over to speaker, I would like to request to our uh, director, sir, Dr. A.K. Singh for uh, his uh, opening remarks. Please, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, as the, this uh, lecture on uh, this uh, safety and health at work, uh, I think it is coinciding. Uh, I am audible. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this uh, safety and health at work is coinciding with the World Day for Safety and Health at Work. Every year on 28th April, this World Day is celebrated for safety and health at work. And uh, uh, the safety and health of our workers who are working uh, with us is very uh, of utmost, utmost importance. And the basic purpose uh, of uh, creating awareness uh, for the safety and uh, this uh, health is, first of all, we have to reduce workplace, workplace stress. Uh, this is very important thing. Then we have to use different tools and this ma machines properly. So likewise, uh, we have to instruct our all workers to wear protective uh, equipment, et cetera. So I would not go in detail. So I would request Dr. Ala Singh to start his uh, lecture on this aspect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Respected uh, director in charge, sir, Dr. A.K. Singh, uh, scientists from ACRIP and uh, colleagues from IIMR. Uh, first of all, I thank Dr. Dagla for this very kind introduction. And as uh, Dr. Dagla has also pointed out uh, the theme of uh, today's talk, and uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, sir, has very rightly pointed out the importance of uh, safety and health. I would straight away go to uh, share some of the things that I found to be very interesting. And uh, some of them are, uh, uh, they can be readily applied and some of them uh, can be a concern for futuristic action also. So uh, I will share my screen first and then discuss on it. So sir, basically, uh, I would like to discuss the farm operations where agricultural workers uh, perform their services from four basic points. One is weather, then hygiene. Thereafter, we have uh, chemical exposure. And uh, at the end, we have injuries that are related to machinery and equipment. Uh, 
So one minute for this uh, little delay in this. Flexor, is it coming? Or you have to move me? Move me, sir. Yeah. I Okay. So, there are four aspects in which I will be uh, talking. The first is weather. So, we uh, know that heat wave has hit the country, and uh, these months are uh, uh, usually very strenuous, and people uh, find various ways to protect themselves from heat. but this is a particular problem for farm laborers because they have to do harvesting and other important farm operations during the same time. So this is very challenging from them, for them. And some solutions are already available and some have been specifically developed for the farm laborers. For example, one solution that can be adopted by the farm workers also is the cooling neck wrap. So basically this is sort of a very lightweight towel that is composed of microfiber structure which absorbs water from the sweat. And once it absorbs the water, it basically increases the surface area and leads to augmented evaporative cooling. So if it, when, since it is placed close to head and neck, it cools down the brain and hence increases the cognitive ability, the ability to take decisions and ability to respond to any emergency situations if they are happening. So this is one uh, uh, scenario. They are available for around 300 or 400 rupees. Sir, in India itself, in Jalandhar, which is very close to Ludhiana, scientists have developed cooling jacket for laborers. And uh, the cost for this is just a meager rupees 1000. So the National Institute of Occupational Health, which is a government agency of ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, they have developed this personal cooling garment. And the benefit of this uh, protective clothing is that it keeps the body temperature around 15 degrees Celsius lower than what the uh, air temperature is. So sir, some of the designs, for example, of cooling jacket, it contains a backpack where uh, ice cold water can be stored. Ice trunk can also be put in this. There is a mini water pump and then there is a vest cooling channel. So it takes the cool water from uh, the backpack and then it distributes throughout the body torso. So uh, there are uh, capillaries in between this vest and uh, they are filled with the help of uh, this water pump. And this is how they keep the body cool. Both the upper body as well as the lower body is kept cool. Once the torso temperature uh, gets down to around 15% lower than uh, the air temperature outside. But sir, someone might say that uh, this backpack is another uh, piece of weight that one has to carry and then you needs, need eyes uh, also. And once it also becomes hot, then uh, it will not work. So then there are other options. For example, there are cooling vests. Now these cooling vests are basically composed of phase change materials. These materials are special that in a hot uh, environment, they absorb the heat. And when the temperature uh, uh, goes beyond a particular limit, below a particular limit actually, then they release this heat. So for example, sir, we understand these phase change material in the heating gels that sometimes we use in the house during winters. These are the phase change materials that are used. 
And then uh, in these vests, basically, these phase change materials are placed inside packets and uh, they cover the whole torso again. Now we can see from the graph on the right and uh, how the phase change material works. So even if the ambient temperature is around 21 degrees Celsius, with this material, the temperature will be 15 degrees Celsius. So the, it, uh, it keeps the body temperature lower as compared to what is uh, present outside. And then, sir, we have solar powered coolers. Sun causes all this heat and warmth, but then this can be used to generate electricity and then run these coolers which uh, for, on which the workers can relieve themselves when, during their rest time at least. So, so people have come with very innovative devices and they are available in India as well. For example, this is a neck fan battery operated neck band. So you can see that there are two little fans which are present and it is a neck band very easy to carry. And uh, there is a rechargeable battery. They can work for uh, some hours and they can provide uh, cooling to the face, basically keeping again the brain and the blood vessels cool around that area. And uh, sir, when we're talking about this solar power co cooler, I wish to share a very uh, inspiring news, which is from Rajasthan, that the camel herders there are using these solar powered coolers, in fact, to, uh, uh, to increase the shelf life of the milk. And uh, using these solar powered coolers, which an NGO has put at a particular location, they have been in fact able to increase their income four times because the milk which otherwise used to get spoiled. Now that milk doesn't get spoiled to that much amount and they can deliver it to their destination. So people are using these concepts in very innovative ways and they can use the same concepts for their own health and safety as well. Now, sir, coming to drinking water because uh, uh, the workers have to work for very long time in the field. How do they get the drinking water? And especially how um, may they be able to obtain cool drinking water? So again, sir, there are some very innovative uh, options available for, uh, again from India, where uh, special kind of clays have been used to prepare these refrigerators. One only has to put water uh, uh, at a particular compartment and then keeps the inside compartment cool. One can put water also or other uh, eatables inside this refrigerator as well. It doesn't need any requirement maintenance. It doesn't run on electricity. Uh, so, so it is a self uh, working equipment as we can see. Then sir, there are water purifiers, solar water purifiers are present. So we can use the energy power of the sun to actually run our devices and install them in our fields for uh, a better uh, lifestyle of the workers. Hygiene is very important and various solutions are again available where hand uh, washing stations are available. After washing the hands, the same water can be recycled. It can be purified again and recycled also. So one particular problem that is often observed by farm workers and even uh, sometimes scientists as well is that uh, since these fields are away from uh, residential places, they sometimes find it very difficult to use washrooms. So in this case, portable washrooms are various setups that are available and they are not very expensive as well. They can be installed uh, temporarily in those fields and so that uh, they can use them. And then there are many options inside these also. So for example, this setup is designed by uh, def uh, DRDO, which is a defense research organization. And on the trains, we find these same bio toilets that they contain uh, a microbial consortia inside where they will be able to degrade the waste material so that it doesn't become a menace to the environment. And so this is an example from Kerala, if I'm not wrong, where these are, these are solar powered and self cleaning uh, uh, washroom setups that uh, have been used. And they have been installed at uh, various places in the state. Only one rupee token is required. And the, the major importance is that they are self-cleaning and don't require much of the maintenance also. And now the government has also introduced facilities of uh, uh, allowing for the use of napkins and diapers in these toilets as well. There are then certain options where composting can also be done. Now, there are something these can also be looked at. And for example, so DRDO has also developed units that can work in cold places, in high altitude places also, where normal metabolism is very slow, microbial growth will be slow, but they have developed special microbial consortia which can, uh, which is effective even at these places. So options are there, it is only, it remains uh, to be used uh, uh, in a, in a optimized way by various people. Now, sir, coming to pesticide spraying, everybody knows that pesticide spraying is a very hazardous activity and one needs 
uh, a sufficient uh, personal protective equipment but again the question is that during all these uh, hot temperature how can one use this personal protective equipment so the yeah. options that we, so the options that we had uh, seen earlier where uh, cooling vests can be used along with them i think if those options are also integrated into these things then there will be more acceptability of uh, these suitings for the farm workers now sir here i want to point out that once a worker gets exposed to pesticides how does one know that a worker has been exposed to pesticides and now what are the warning signals i mean early warning signals before the day so that the danger can be avoided so research is going on for a number of blood for for a number of biomarkers in urine and blood for example which can indicate the presence or which can indicate the uh, indicate the exposure to particular uh, classes of uh, pesticides so people are working on these things also and uh, for example in central brazil this research was done where they have found that these biomarkers can be useful in informing about pesticide exposure so one program can be decide, defined where uh, where the farm workers actually undergo this biomarker testing before the season and after spraying what are the exposure levels so that they can optimize their practice as well so these some avenues can be taken up and uh, sir real time risk monitoring can also be done for example 3m company this is just an example from 3m company where they provide wearable badges that once they are exposed to these pesticides then these readings will come on these badges and they will come to know that whether they are uh, taking in uh, a lot of uh, hazardous chemicals and so that they can stop they can take preventive measures or the worker uh, himself or herself can be changed so these uh, wearable badges also provide a very good uh, technology option for risk monitoring to pesticide exposure there are various companies which uh, provide these kind of badges and now sir since the drones are available so this risk can also be minimized although all, although there are occupational uh, hazards for drone workers as well that if the fans are not properly oriented if they are uh, they are not adjusted well then the drones themselves can become an occupational hazard but then those things can be taken care of sir one thing which is very uh, particular important for places where silage especially is uh, being popularized nowadays and uh, that includes punjab uh, predominantly that people have reported incidences of silo fillers disease earlier so what happens that if silage uh, so uh, silage can be good quality on the left as we can see or it can be of bad quality if it is not properly fermented in bad quality silages nitrogen nitrogen dioxide gas is released which causes a lot of problems so it, it 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 is often lethal wherever it has been reported although its uh, reports are rare but wherever this uh, happens uh, it is usually lethal to the farm workers so they need to be uh, very this is an occupational hazard for the silage and one needs to take care of this thing as well apart from uh, sir these things various uh, workers those especially who are involved in livestock handling for example they are also exposed to certain uh, pathogens which are of animal origin and can easily be transmitted to humans for example sir this uh, uh, this piece of research which was done it was found that in india there is tuberculosis in human population and the major reason is bovine tuberculosis so those farmers who are exposed to bovine who are exposed to these uh, uh, cattle or other animals they need to take care they need to be sure that they don't catch that sort of infection and they need to break those transmissions then we need to see that from where this uh, harmful bacteria are coming and we need to break those transmissions and at the same time protect the farm workers as well so they they, they also need to undergo regular testing in order to find out whether they need uh, immunization or whether they need active uh, medication in order to prevent this disease which often comes late in the age which often comes in of uh, old age when the body is already compromised and it is often lethal at those times uh, because there is need for one health approach uh, then sir there is uh, farm equipment safety which is important and uh, nowadays tractors are coming with this roll over protection systems tnau and uh, various universities are working for uh, systems so that farm farm workers do not get injuries and they should be mandatory i think and uh, government has got uh, there are already laws in place where it is important to you uh, to bring in these safety measurements especially for dangerous equipment that uh, happens uh, that that's true for chaff cutters and other sort of uh, sugarcane crushers also and for dust control systems like 
in cashew nuts for example cashew nut shell liquid is very harmful and simple intervention that uh, giving providing latest glove latex gloves to the workers can prevent these sorts of injuries so this uh, man who is famously known by the name uh, kamlesh jugadu and he came in shark tank india uh, so uh, they these are the people who are working for innovations towards treasury reduction and they uh, got funding also they, they are getting encouragement from the society so this is the way forward i think where, where people where innovations some innovations also take care into account the safety and health measures so this is again one example from shark tank india where the electric battery system was uh, uh, pitched that can convert a normal cycle to an electric cycle and it is uh, very user friendly apart from this sir then there are safety tracking apps now uh, farm workers basically are uh, utilizing uh, these safety uh, uh, the employers are basically utilizing safety uh, tracks where all the farm workers are uh, present uh, they are basically present on the system and they are given those emergency buttons that they can uh, if they, in case of any emergency in the in case they want wish to, to seek any help then they can relay these messages from their mobiles and then it can go to some centralized setup or to the emergency providers so that uh, these important vital hours can be saved and uh, lives can be saved in case of any emergency they they for example include panic buttons multiple monitor alerts latest location informations so all these things so that uh, one person has got a birds eye view of where all the people are present geo tagging can be done and uh, help can be provided to them in case of any emergency situations so sir, these are some of the examples which i found that they can either be uh, utilized by various uh, setups right now or uh, they they can be part of some futuristic action also for example trying to see that what sort of pesticides are we using and what biomarkers basically can be used to track those pesticides uh, exposure in uh, farm workers and op overall how can we improve their health and introduce the aspect of safety in uh, these settings uh with this sir i would like to conclude thank you all thanks a lot for uh, in, uh, asking me to deliver this lecture it, i could get a lot of uh, new information and knowledge for myself as well thank you sir thank you. in case sir if anybody has uh, any questions i would be happy to answer them thank you dr ala singh ji uh, you have given very nice presentation on uh, safety and health at uh, workplace Uh, because as we know that uh, health is very precious uh, in human being and we are uh, we all are working whether in lab or field or uh, whatever in factory and uh, uh, in market where, wherever we are working we need the safety for our health uh, so uh, before uh, uh, if uh, nobody has a, if, if anybody has any question uh, then please ask if uh, any uh, if uh, nobody has question so i can move further sir uh, this is not a question uh, this is compliments to ala singh uh, dr ala singh has given you know recent advances apart from this there are very indigenous techniques are there uh we were uh, aware about those only but uh, advances uh, here at thank you for that uh, some of the indigenous technology must also be taken into consideration because people are using uh, from since generations and they are mostly adapted to our climatic conditions thank you sir thank you sir thank you so so before uh, present vote of thanks i request uh, our uh, director uh, in charge dr ak singh ji for uh, his uh, remarks uh, thank you uh, dagla 
and uh, thank you very much uh, to dr ala singh for presenting very nice uh, talk in this uh, i would like to i mean a supplement that uh, since uh, ages as uh, sl has uh, clearly mentioned that lot of indigenous techniques are there so if uh, anybody has worked at farm you must be knowing that farm uh, labor does not require i mean uh, uh, this uh, uh, cool uh, water for drinking or uh, i mean chilled water for drinking because whenever farmer or worker is working on farm his body become warm and if at that time he take uh, i mean um, chilled water then uh, he may go get some infection so in uh, indigenous technique is that normal temperature of water is uh, i mean taken so indigenous techniques are from age old our ancestors our our farmers our laborers they are using and uh, with the i mean modernization Uh, use of uh, this insecticide pesticide herbicide for these things uh, uh, whatsoever dr ala singh has suggested that uh, we should uh, arrange the protective gears uh, for our laborer so that they may not get infection or uh, any kind of uh, infestation that is uh, very important so with these words i again thanks and uh, we should also consider our indigenous techniques i mean from a old what's over going on thank you very much thank you sir uh, i am happy to uh, present a vote of thanks for this event uh, as it is our uh, first event in this series uh, in this year so i am highly thankful to our director sir dr h s jard to give a permission and a guidance to organize this event and uh, i am also thankful to dr ak singh director in charge uh, for uh, gracing this occasion and give his very useful and guiding remarks and uh, i am thankful to uh, dr ala singh ji who has presented very nice uh, uh, by very nice presentation on safety and health at work and uh, his presentation was very scientific and uh, and explained different ways and means of uh, uh, safety uh, and i am also thankful to my colleagues dr colleague dr roman sharma who has provided help a lot to organize this uh, uh, this event and uh, i also thankful to all participants from iamr regional stations and uh, uh, different aicrp centers uh, at last uh, i am uh, also thankful to all who has contributed directly and indirectly and who has uh, given his presence here in this occasion in this event and in this series uh, we are continue we will celebrate continue in every week uh, one or two program by different centers and uh, i will send all centers the schedule program we uh, which the director has uh, approved uh, so thank you all